I am Dr. R. J. Golden Rajit Nimal, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. Today we are going to discuss about the mechanisms in theory of machines. So these are all the contents which we are going to discuss today: machines, structures, links or elements, kinematic pairs. kinematic chain degrees of freedom mechanism and inversions what is a machine so machine is a device which receives some energy and transforms to some useful work right so this uh, machine is a device which receives any energy any kind of energy it may be an electrical energy or it may be an uh, mechanical energy and we can transforms that available energy and utilize that to some useful work right so for example we can say uh, any kind of uh, machines right it may be a lathe or uh, in the uh, slide i uh, i posted i mean uh, that is the uh, reciprocating steam engine right and uh, dynamo is an best example uh, dynamo which is used in the bicycle can be taken as a machine and it converts the mechanical energy uh, into electrical energy which powers the headlamp of the bicycle right and uh, uh, machine tools like uh, lathe shaper planer or also a machine and in that machine uh, uh, they convert the electrical energy supplied to them into some useful work what kind of work uh, turning uh, turning the rod uh, cutting the threads chopper uh, turning the chopper like so these are all the uh, examples for the machines then come to the um, structure before come to the structure studying the structure we should know what is in the resident uh, resistant body right what is in the resistant body so resistant body uh, is said to be a, uh, the body is said to be a resistant if it is capable of transmitting the required force with negligible deformation what is in the deformation deformation means uh, uh change in the shape and uh, size right so that is called as a deformation so here there is no negligible deformation means that is called as a resistant body um, we can uh, uh, give some examples like uh, uh, belt uh, uh, rope uh, i mean um, uh, chains right so these are all the practical examples of, for the um, uh, for examples for the resistant body right see now come to the structure now what is a structure it is an assemblage it is an assemblage number of assemblage of uh, resistant bodies have no relative motion between them right what is meant a relative motion relative motion means the, with the help of that uh, one uh, part another uh, more another motion is happening that is called as an um uh, the relative motion right so what is in the structure come to the structure and it is an assemblage of number of resistant bodies or members having no relation relative motion between them right and it is only uh, for carrying the loads uh, having the swinging action right so the the resistant bodies which constitute the structure are known as members right so we can call it as members also right and uh, we can uh, give so many examples like uh, bridges uh, buildings roof trusses machine frames etc right so these are all the uh, important uh, uh, things uh, in uh, structure right so come to the difference between the machine and the structure right what are what are the, you know what is in the machine and uh, now structure also we study so um, in the relative motion uh, exist between the parts means that is called as a machine and no relative motion exist uh, between the members means that is called as a structure then uh, come to the next point it uh, transforms the available energy useful energy right energy to some other work means that is called machine and the structure there is no transformation of uh, uh, energy right to some useful work right so this is another example i mean uh, difference then come to the third uh, thing that is links are meant to transmit motion transmit motion and the forces right 
and members it is just for carrying the load and uh, having a straining action right examples for the machine already we studied um, dynamos then scooters or cars lathes shaper planer uh, so many examples we can see and uh, for the structure uh, the roof trusses building uh, buildings bridges uh, and so on so th these are all the differences between the machine and the structure come to the next one that is a kinematic link or an element what is the kinematic link we can call it as link simply link or simply element right so each part of a machine which moves relative to some other part means then it is called as a kinematic link right so in this uh, example uh, again i um pasted that kinematic i mean reciprocating steam engine in that reciprocating engine so many parts are there crank is one part then uh, bearings are one part then flywheel is another part connecting rod is another part right and the piston is uh, there piston rod is there piston uh, i mean cylinder is there so because of the rotation you know the crank is always rotating towards 360 degree and um, uh, so uh, crank is always rotating and based on the rotation of the crank the connecting rod is reciprocating right and because of that reciprocation of the connecting rod the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder so this is called as an relative motion this is called a relative motion so each part of a machine which moves relative to some other part means then it is called as an uh, link or kinematic link right so uh, uh, there are some some characteristics of a link there are some characteristics of a link uh, that is uh, it should uh, have relative motion it should have a relative motion and um, it must have a, i mean it must be a resistant body it must be a resistant body so this is called these are all the characteristics of uh, uh, the links see uh, so in this uh, not only the steam engine we can uh, uh, give so many examples practical examples uh, lathe we can give so any type of uh, examples we can give right and come to the types of links <clears throat> uh, there are three types of uh, um, kinematic links are there so it is classified into three types one is the rigid link second one is the flexible link and the third one is a fluid link right so what is in the rigid link what is in the rigid link so rigid link means uh, the link which does not go any deformation while transmitting the motion while transmitting the motion so that is called as a rigid link can you uh, we can give uh, so many examples for uh, rigid links like uh, connecting rod uh, crankshaft uh mm, i mean a piston uh, so many examples we can give for rigid link uh, then come to the second one that is called flexible link flexible link means uh, the link the link which is partly deformed partly deformed in a manner not to affect the transmission of motion so that is called as an uh, that is called as an flexible link so the example is uh belt drive ropes chain drives um ropes uh, i mean uh, wires we can uh, say so many example right so uh, this is the this is called as a flexible link come to the fluid link uh, the in fluid link a link formed by having a fluid in a receptacle and the motion is transmitted through the fluid by pressure so these are all the uh, fluid uh, this is called as a fluid link and the best example is uh, hydraulic press hydraulic brake uh, hydraulic lift uh, excavators right so we can uh, uh, give so many examples Hy hydraulic cranes right so these are all, all the uh, types of links then come to the kinematic pairs kind what is in the kinematic pair kinematic pair means nothing but um two or more uh, kinematic links join together 
and it transmits the relative motion means or it permits the relative motion means then it is called as a kinematic pair right if the relative motion uh, between the uh, pairs is completely or successfully constrained in a definite direction so uh, 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 this, this is called as a kinematic pair so uh, we can uh, give so many so many examples um so connecting rod and uh, crank so this is an uh, pair crank is an uh, uh, link and connecting rod is another link so which combines uh, to form a kinematic pairs then kind of uh, connecting rod is there piston rod is there which joins together and transmits the relative motion means then it is called as a kinematic pair then piston is there engine cylinder is there now it uh, combines to uh transmit the relative motion means then it is called as a kinematic pair so see we can say so many examples of kinematic pair also and uh, come to the classification come to the classification of uh, kinematic pairs so uh, we can classify the kinematic pairs uh, into three ways one is the nature of contact and second one is the nature of relative motion then uh, third one is the nature of mechanical arrangement right the first one is uh, nature of contact so this by uh, according to the nature of contact or type of contact between the elements or links is classified into two types one is the uh, lower pair and higher pair right so lower pair what is the lower pair if a pair uh, has a surface contact surface contact between the two elements means then it is called as a lower pair right so we can uh, it will be seen that uh, sliding pair uh, turning pair and screw pair uh, forms a lower pair so um, so some examples may be there uh, all are practical examples only nut and bolt we are uh, uh, day to day life we are using uh, nut and bolt right uh, bolt and uh, sockets right so then in the nut and bolt or sockets uh, and bolt then a piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder mm, uh, right and the syringes uh, injection for your injection purpose we are using the syringes that syringe also uh, an uh, good example for uh, this lower pair right so uh, come to the higher pair come to the higher pair uh, it is uh, when the two when two elements of a pair having a line contact or a point contact between the um, two elements then it is called as a higher pair right so uh, higher pair means uh, we can have uh, so many examples right so um, what is meant by line contact line contact means belt drive rope then chain drives uh, bearing so these are all comes under the uh, line contact so then what is meant by um, point contact point contact means in a single point uh, it is contacted right gears cam and follower right so a pair of friction wheels uh, then ball bearings right etc or comes under the point contact so this is called as an uh, lower pair and higher pair then come to the second classification second classification that is called as an uh, according to the relative motion between the elements right so relative motion uh, kinematic pair is classified into uh, five types mainly one is a sliding pair second one is a turning pair third one is a rolling pair fourth one is a screw pair fifth one is a spherical pair right so first to come to the sliding pair what is meant by sliding pair sliding pair means uh, when two elements of a pair are connected in such a way that one can slide relative to another has a completely constrained motion right uh, i'll explain what is in the completely um, constrained motion successfully constrained motion i'll explain later right and uh, it is otherwise called as prismatic uh, pair it is otherwise called as prismatic pair so when two elements having a sliding motion relative to other uh, each other means then it is called as a sliding pair 
So best example uh, is a square bar in a square hole, right? Square bar in a square hole. So that is a um, best example for sliding and uh, uh, piston and cylinder, piston and cylinder arrangement. That is also an example for sliding. Then uh, tail stock on the lathe bed, right? Tail stock on the lathe bed. Then cross head and uh, guides of an reciprocating steam engine is an example. Then uh, so many examples of there, right? And the ram is uh, sliding uh, um, <clears throat> in the two and four uh, shaper machine, right? Ram is uh, moving or reciprocating in the uh, shaper machine. So this is the uh, example for the uh, sliding pair. Come to uh, the examples of uh, turning. The second one is the turning pair. Turning pair is otherwise called as revolute pair. Uh, it's otherwise called a revolute pair. And what is in the turning pair when two elements are connected such a way that one element revolves around the other, uh, 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 revolves around the other. It is called as a turning pair, right? So the other name of uh, uh, turning pair or revolute pair is hinged pair. It is otherwise called as hinged pair, right? So the best example is um, lathe spindle supported in a headstock, then cycle uh, wheels, cycle or any automobiles, right? Wheels uh, turning over their axles, right? And uh, uh, crankshaft, crankshaft in a journal bearing in an engine. So we can uh, give so many examples for the uh, turning pair. Then come to the uh, third point that is the uh, rolling pair. What is in the rolling pair? Rolling pair means when one element is free to roll on another uh, object, right? It is uh, it forms a, a rolling pair, right? So example is uh, uh, ball and uh, roller bearing, then uh, lawn uh, mover uh, rolling uh, around a uh, lawn, then uh, road roller, road roller rolling uh, over, uh, I mean, uh, over the, uh, ground, right? So these are all the uh, examples, right, uh, of the rolling pair. Then uh, come to the uh, fourth point, that is the screw pair. What is the screw pair? Screw pair means when the element or uh, uh, one link is constrained to have a combination of turning pair and sliding pair, right? So, uh, turning pair, uh, sliding motion and the turning motion, uh, relative to some other element means then it is called as a uh, screw pair. This screw pair is otherwise called as helical pair, right? It is otherwise called as helical pair, right? Example is um, nut and bolts, then uh, lead screw of a uh, lathe with a nut, then a threaded spindle and a movable join uh, uh, bench wise. So these are all the examples. Then come to the last uh, 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 thinkers, spherical pair. What does in this spherical pair? So in a spherical pair, one link is constrained to swivel in uh, or, or about the fixed axis, right? Fixed point. Example, uh, pen stand, car mirror, right? Then uh, car mirror, bike mirror, whatever it may be, right? There is a ball and socket join. So uh, it is uh, swivel, swivel, it is swivel about the fixed point. So these are all the examples for the spherical pair. Come to the last part of uh, uh, the um, classification, third classification according to the um, mechanical arrangement. According to the mechanical arrangement, uh, it is classified into two types. One is a uh, self-closed pair and forced closed pair, right? The other names for self-closed pair uh, is closed pair, right, and unclosed pair, right. Then uh, closed pair and open pair. So we can um, have, we can uh, call it uh, simply closed pair and unclosed pair, right. So what is the closed pair? When two elements of a pair are held uh, together mechanically, they constitute a um, closed pair or Oh, what is the example? All the lower pairs are uh, closed pairs, self-closed pairs, right? 
so you can know uh, what is in the lower pair so all the lower pairs are the distinct samples then come to the unclosed pair or open pair what is in the open pair or the closed pair or post closed pair uh, see when uh, two links or elements are not held together mechanically they constitute an unclosed pair right example is a uh, flat belt running on the pulley then uh, you can see in uh, uh, rice mills right in olden days now it uh, now the machines are very very compact uh, rice mills um, you know, machines are very compact in olden days uh, we, you can see this uh, flat belt uh, on uh, is running on the pulley then camel follower is also an example so these are all the important classifications of the kinematic pair come to the constrained motion and come to the constrained motion what uh, it is classified into three types one is the completely constrained motion uh, incompletely constrained motion uh, and successfully constrained motion three types first one is the completely constrained motion what is in this completely constrained motion so when the motion between a pair is limited to a definite direction then the motion is called said to be a completely constrained motion example square bar moving in a square hole square bar moving in a square hole i uh, um, already put the diagram in the slide a uh, square bar a uh, square bar is moving in a square hole so there is no rotary motion only reciprocating motion is also was sliding right reciprocating motion is uh, possible right and uh, uh, another example uh, circular hole uh, i mean uh, circular shaft in a shaft in a round hole right and we should attach two collars on either side right collars on either side so there is no uh, uh, reciprocating motion only there is an uh, there is an um, there is an um, ro rotating motion right rotary motion is right so this is called as an successfully as a completely constrained motion then come to the incompletely constrained motion when the motion between the pairs can take uh, takes place in is more than one direction or more than one direction then it is uh, said to be incompletely constrained motion right so uh, circular bar in a circular hole circular bar in a circular hole so there is the possibility of uh, uh, rotating motion and reciprocating motion rotary motion and reciprocating motion then it is called as an incompletely constrained motion incompletely constrained motion so then uh, this is called as an this is a second uh, type of, right and come to the last type that is successfully constrained motion right so when the motion between the elements forming a pair is such that the uh, constrained motion is not completed by itself by but by some other means so this is called as an successfully constrained motion example is uh, shaft in a footstep bearing ice engine valve uh, piston uh, inside the cylinder so these are all the examples for the successfully constrained motion then come to the kinematic chain what is meant by kinematic chain when the kinematic pairs are uh, coupled or connected in such a way that the two or more uh, kinematic pairs join together and transmit the relative motion means then it is called as an kinematic chain right so when two or more uh, or we can say the combination of kinematic pairs joined together in such a way that the relative motion is uh, between the links or elements is completely or successfully constrained right so a chain may be locked chain or uh, constrained and unconstrained so these are all the uh, comes under the kinematic chain then uh, come to the mechanism what is in the mechanism what is in the mechanism mechanism 
when uh, two or when one of the link of a kinematic chain is fixed, the chain is known as mechanism. When one of the link of a kinematic chain is fixed, the chain is uh, known as mechanism. So it may be uh, used for transmitting or transforming motion. It, uh, it may be uh, for used for transmitting or transforming motion. So printing uh, machine is an example, or we can uh, uh, have typewriter, right? Typewriter, then windshield wiper, then uh, robo arms. We can uh, have so many, so many examples for the uh, mechanisms, right? And uh, oh, so this uh, mechanism may be regarded as a machine in which each, each part of part is reduced to a simplest form, uh, to transmit the required motion, right? So what is the difference between uh, um, the mechanism and the machine, right? So the mechanism transmits and modify motion. My machine transmits force and couple. Then uh, um, mechanism, a mechanism is a skeleton outline of a machine to produce a definite motion between various links. Machine means uh, it may be uh, many have many mechanisms for transmitting power and mechanical work. So mechanism example clock, uh, typewriter, etc. Then um, uh, uh, machines shaper, planer in workshops we can have right. So these are all the uh, example. I mean uh, difference between the mechanism and the machine. Then come to the types of mechanism types of uh, mechanism types of mechanism it is mainly classified into two types one is uh, the simple mechanism and the compound mechanism simple mechanism and compound mechanism right so uh, what is the simple mechanism simple mechanism uh, is a mechanism with four links is known as simple mechanism right and uh, example is uh, four bar chain uh, single slider crank mechanism. Oh, these are all the um, examples for the simple mechanism, right? What is the compound mechanism? And me the mechanism with more than four links is known as the compound mechanism, right? More than four links. More than four links means then it is called as a compound mechanism, right? Then come to uh, the now, degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom is otherwise called as a mobility of a mechanism, right? Mobility of a mechanism. What is in the mobility? What is in the mobility? Mobility means number of uh, uh, independent coordinates required to required to specify or describe or specify the configuration or position. Uh, of all the links of a mechanism with respect to the fixed links at any given instant, right? Any, I mean, uh, the possible input, the possible input. It is otherwise called as uh, um, uh, mobility. So mobility uh, of a mechanism is defined as a number of input parameters which must be controlled independently uh, to bring uh, to in order to bring the device into a particular position is called as an uh, mechanism right sorry uh, degrees of freedom right so before come to the degrees of freedom we should know what is in by joints right what is in by joints what is in by joint joined means uh, two or more uh, um, uh, links joined in a single point is called as an joint right so it, it is classified into three types one is the binary joint uh second one is the ternary joint third one is the quaternary joint right uh so what is in the binary joint binary joint means if two uh links are joined at the same um, joint then it is called as a binary joint right so uh, the, so the four bar uh we can in four bar chain we can have four joints. Well, all the joints are binary, right? And uh, come to the ternary joint. Ternary joint means if three links are joined together um, in the same joint, then it is called as a ternary joint, right? So in ternary joint, 
it will be equivalent to two binary joints, right? Two equivalent to two binary joints. So that is called as a ternary joint. Then come to the quaternary joint. Quaternary joint means mm, a, a joint with four links. Four links is known as quaternary joint, and one quaternary joint is equivalent to three binary joints, right? So mm, while we are doing the problems, we just uh, give this input. Uh, Right, so th these are all the important uh, types of joints. And uh, come to um, the Grubler's criteria. What is the Grubler's criterion or Grubler's equation, right? So Grubler's equation or Grubler's criteria is used to find the mobility or number of uh, degrees of freedom uh, in a given chain, right? So if uh, m is equal to m in mobility, and uh, m is equal to 3 in the n minus 1 minus um, j1 minus j2, right? So j means uh, uh, number of joints in the first degrees of freedom and uh, similarly for the next degrees of freedom. n means number of uh, link in the mechanism. So this is the thing. And come for the uh, inversion of mechanism. You know, already uh, we studied about the mechanism and now we are... Uh, uh, going to study about the inversion of mechanism. What is the inversion of mechanism? Inversion means the method of obtaining different mechanisms by fixing different uh, links in a kinematic chain is called as an uh, inversion of mechanism. Right? Example, um, a kinematic chain have four links makes four different mechanisms by fixing different uh, links at one at a time, right? So thus we uh, get many mechanisms as a number of links in a kinematic chain by fixing its different links in turn, right? So kinematic chains are classified into three types. One is, um, one is single four bar chain or quadratic uh, cycle chain, right? Then come to single slider crank chain, double slider, crank chain right so what is done by four bar mechanism right four bar mechanism or four bar chain right so this is an uh, four bar chain uh four bar chain means uh, it has four links it has four links and uh it is the basic and the most fundamental and the simplest kinematic chain it's a very simplest kinematic chain and it has uh four links and that four links are turning pairs. All the four pairs are turning pairs, right? So this is a uh, diagram. And in this, uh, the first link, uh, first link is the uh, crank. Uh, uh, sorry, the first link is the uh, fixed link. The first link is a fixed link. Fixed link means uh, in generally we can uh, call it as a uh, frame, right? The fixed link is called as a frame, right? And uh, second link normally uh, we are having um, is crank. Crank is the second link, and that link is the uh, crank. Right? Crank is always rotating. Right? The link which makes a complete revolution, then it is called as a crank. Right? So the, this is the second link. Third link is the third link is always opposite to the. Uh, uh, fixed link and uh, uh, the crank is uh, always crank is always adjacent adjacent to the fixed link and this crank is otherwise called as driver this otherwise called as driver then the third link is the uh, what is the motion of uh, the uh, crank it is always rotating right it is always rotating the third link is that a uh, connecting rod and it is otherwise called as coupler it is otherwise called as coupler so the link opposite to the fixed link is called as a coupler and uh, uh, it is always reciprocating it is always reciprocating uh, and the last link and uh, it is called as a lever the lever that other names of lever is a uh, rocker or follower, right? Uh, rocker or follower. So these are all the four uh, links. And the last link that is uh, mm, liver is always, always oscillating. 
and or partial rotation partial rotation or oscillation right and uh, uh, this uh, crank is rotating uh, by means of the crank the connecting rod is reciprocating and by means of the reciprocation of the crank i am kind of reciprocation of the connecting rod the lever is oscillating the lever is oscillating and uh, uh, so it is uh, uh, it is a motion of an uh, four bar chain right and uh, um, the uh, based on a law right very important law for the four bar mechanism is grechoff's law it is a grechoff's law what the grechoff's law says the grechoff's law says that the sum of the shortest and the longest link cannot be greater than the sum of the remaining two link lengths uh, when there is a continuous relative motion between the members or links right so this is called as an grechoff's law very important law uh, for the four bar mechanism it is only applicable for four bar mechanism so um, grechoff's law means it is uh, the sum of the shortest and the longest link cannot be greater than the sum of the remaining two link lengths when there is a continuous relative motion between the uh, members right so uh, this is a, the best example for the four bar mechanism is viper 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 uh, we can see uh, the viper the mechanism or uh, working of vipers in uh, lorries or i mean trucks or buses we can see that right so the best example of the uh, four bar mechanism is viper right and uh, so the, this is the thing and uh, this is a four bar mechanism or quadratic chain cyclic chain so right so first link is uh, fixed link that is frame second link is the crank the, and how can we identify this is a crank because it is the shortest link in the kinematic chain because it is the shortest link in the kinematic chain then it is called as an um, crank right and how can we identify the uh, coupler or connecting rod right so uh, it is the longest chain this is the longest link in the kinematic chain it is the longest link in the kinematic chain that's what uh, we can uh, easily identify uh, the um, uh, the crank and the connecting rod right so the shortest link will make a complete revolution uh, relative to other other three links so this is a basic uh, thinkers crank and it is otherwise called as driver so once the crank is rotated because of the uh, rotation of the crank the connecting rod is reciprocating and because of the reciprocation motion uh, the uh, rocker or lever is oscillating so this is called as an relative motion this is called as an relative motion see in uh, four bar mechanism we are having uh, three inversion right there is no specific names for that uh, inversions right uh, so first inversion second inversion third inversion right first inversion uh, we have some applications the second inversion we have application third inversion we have some examples right first application is beam engine second inversion application is uh, coupled locomotive wheels and the third inversion application is watts indicator right so this is a beam engine so beam engine normally we can use um the um uh, this uh, rot convert the rotary motion into a uh, reciprocating motion right so rotary motion into reciprocating motion we are using the uh, beam engine right so uh, in, here uh, in beam engine we have uh, um crank we are having uh, the lever we have having uh, uh, piston everything we are having so the while uh, the rotation of the crank right so the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder right so you can have so many uh, videos or uh, animation videos in youtube right so and uh, so this is an uh, this is called as a beam engine right the second one is the coupled locomotive wheels coupled locomotive wheels so what is in the coupled locomotive wheels so uh, this mechanism is obtained is known as crank crank mechanism or double crank mechanism or rotary rotary converter 
right rotary rotary converter right um so uh, sec this is the second inversion of an uh, four bar mechanism it is called as a double crank mechanism it is a, so if the shutter link uh, uh, there is a link one right link one uh, link one is the fixer link link three is the fixer i mean uh, uh, link one and link two three are uh, same uh, dimension and link four and link two are the same direction so in this mechanism ad and bc having equal length act as a crank and are connected to the respective wheels in uh, uh, so it's transmitting rotary motion from one wheel to another wheel so that is called this is called as a coupled locomotive wheels so this is the animation part then third one is the watts indicator mechanism right watts indicator mechanism so this uh, uh, watts indicator i mean uh, this mechanism was invented by watt for his uh, steam engine to guide the piston rod to guide the piston rod it is uh, also known as a simplex indicator it is uh, uh, otherwise called a simplex indicator um for his steam engine james watt uh, invented this uh, to uh reduce the um a pressure right uh, which is in the uh the steam pressure which is in the um uh, cylinder right so this is a uh, third inversion of an mechanism right so pantograph and uh, ackerman steering is also an example for the uh four bar mechanism come to the um single slider crank chain mechanism inversion we have four inversion in uh, single slider crank chain mechanism oh, one um, they here also there is no specific names for uh, the inversion so uh, reciprocating engine or compressor then whitworth quick return mechanism genome engine or rotary engine then crank and slaughter lever mechanism that is the third inversion and the bull engine or hand pump is the last inversion right so this is a single slider crank chain mechanism in single slider crank chain mechanism the uh, slider slider is uh, oh, there is uh, only one slider is there there is only one slider is there and uh, it has uh, one slider and three turning pairs totally four uh, uh, four uh, links are there right and it is used to convert the reciprocating motion to rotary motion and vice versa right and uh, here uh frame is there uh crank is there connecting red rod is there and instead of that lever we are having a slider right uh, or cross head whatever it may be we can say that right and the computer this is a reciprocating engine or reciprocating compressor right uh, so what is in by uh, reciprocating engine and reciprocating compressor see in both uh, reciprocating type of, uh, engine and compressor Mm, so uh, in the engine the piston is the driver the piston is the driver for engine and uh, um, and uh, for the compressor uh, crank is the driver crank is the driver so this is the uh, this is the first thing and uh, second one is the um, and the second one is the uh, pendulum pump what is it by pendulum pump what is meant by pendulum pump right so when uh, it is otherwise called as bull engine or uh, when uh, the crank is given a rotary motion the connecting uh, rod oscillate about the pin which is pivoted to the uh, fixed link that is four a uh, fourth link right so the piston attached to the uh, piston link a uh, piston rod uh so it is uh, there is a uh, possible uh, moment right there is a possible moment right so this is called as an uh, bull engine and uh, this mechanism is used to uh, supply feed water to the boilers right feed water to the boilers then uh, oscillating cylinder uh, engine mechanism come to the oscillating cylinder engine mechanism what is in the oscillating cylinder mechanism the oscillating cylinder engine mechanism is used to convert the reciprocation motion uh, into the rotary motion right so
so uh, so in the diagram itself we can uh, have a clear picture on that uh, so the rotary motion or reciprocating motion into rotary motion so that is uh, called the oscillating cylinder engine this is a genome engine so this is an uh, genome engine in olden days um, we used in uh, um, aircraft right so rotary engine is also known as genome engine and it is uh, contributed so largely in the development of uh, mechanical flights in early years right nowadays we are not using that uh, but nowadays it is replaced by the gas turbines right and um, the rotary uh, engine um, it has an odd number of cylinders it has an odd number of cylinders five seven depending upon the size of uh, uh, the engine right so size of the flights right anyway odd number of cylinders we are using five seven nine cylinders we are using and um, this uh, engine we have uh, uh, we can have the rotary motion into the rotating motion right then uh, so this is the radial engine right and uh, to come to the inversions of uh, double slider crank chain mechanism so in the inversion of uh, double slider crank chain mechanism three inversions first inversion second inversion third inversion the application is elliptical trammel uh, scotch yoke mechanism old arms coupling etc right and the elliptical trammel uh, it is used to draw the ellipse it is it is an instrument which is used to draw the ellipse right so this is called as an elliptical trammel so it is a it has a two uh, sliders it has two sliders one is in the horizontal direction and another one is in the vertical direction right then uh, come to the scotch yock mechanism scotch yock mechanism is uh, used for converting the rotary motion into reciprocating uh, reciprocating motion by means of two sliders right one is uh, the piston and another one is the slider but both are moving in the um both are sliding only so the last one is um old arms coupling right old arms coupling means uh, what is the use of uh, old arms coupling old arms coupling means uh, uh, it is a device which we, it is a mechanism which is used to transmit the motion between the shafts which are parallel but not coaxial right the uh, two parallel shafts uh, not in the same axis then we can go for this old arms coupling. So this is this mechanism is mainly used to transmit the motion between the two shafts, which are parallel but not the coaxial, right? So these uh, these are all the things uh, we discussed uh, um, in this uh, video, and uh, we can see uh, the how we can apply uh, these inversions uh, in uh, next video. Thank you.